Good afternoon. My name's Eric and I'm going to tell you a bit of the history of the uh, British Home Guard in World War II. Well, the Home Guard was set up originally at the local defence volunteers in uh, May 1940. Britain was in a precarious position, its troops were being pushed back to the Channel Coast, its allies were surrendering one after the other, um, and desperate measures were needed. So on May the 14th, 1940, Secretary of State for War, Mr Anthony Eden, put an appeal out for um, men to come forward and join the Home Guard, and thousands did. Um, originally their role was thought to be um, quite mundane, um, just volunteering as it were, um, say checking people's ID cards, everyone had to carry ID. We weren't issued with uniforms early on, so um, what their significant others would do, their wives might make them a nice armband like the one I've got on here saying LDV, Local Defence Volunteers. Now Winston Churchill and his usual blundering way came charging in, but now I want something far more dynamic and renamed them the Home Guard, I um, want to give them a more dynamic role. So on the uh, July 22nd, um, 1940, they became the Home Guard. Um, and they carried on until they were stood down in 1944. Now we think of them from Dad's army as old men, but half of them were under the age of 28. Over 1,200 were killed. They did quite dangerous stuff. They uh, manned anti-aircraft guns. They used to guard unexploded bombs um, to the uh, bomb disposal units could come and uh, and make them safe um, and there were some small elite groups called the uh, HQ auxiliary units of about half a dozen or so um, they were given weapons and uniforms very early on and their their groups those little cells had secret eight, um, headquarters um, and when the Germans came they would be um, there the idea was they would rise up behind enemy lines and carry out guerrilla war now my granddad was in the home guard I've got a lovely picture of him here on his motorbike. He was a motorbike dispatch rider. Oh, driving on his own motorbike, delivering messages throughout the blitz as bombs, bombs were raining down in the blackout. The blackout meant that there were no lights. Um, everyone's headlamps were just a, a thin slit and hooded, so it was very difficult to see. So driving around in the blitz was very dangerous. Um, now, Early on, didn't have any uniforms, but once your uniforms arrive, what happens if you're caught unawares? You're caught unawares and you're something the Germans invade and you're nowhere near your uniform. How could you prove you're in the Home Guard? Well, they were given a nice enamel badge like this that twists off. This is my lovely enamel badge. And it's worn in the buttonhole on the lapel to show that you are a member of the Home Guard. Now the Home Guard here where I am in Lincoln, they originally first met at the Lincoln School, which is Lincoln Christ Hospital School. Um, and Lincoln, she's got a, an interesting connection with the Home Guard because there was a guy called Tom Winteringham. Tom Winteringham wrote a couple of books, including The New Way of War. Now he set up a, uh, a training camp at Ospley Park near Isleworth um, in uh, west of London and the idea of that place was it trained people in guerrilla warfare. Now Wintrigan was an ex-communist, he fought in the Spanish Civil War and he wanted a sort of civilian militia um, but ex-communists and ex-members of the British Union and fascists couldn't join the Home Guard so Wintrigan's ideas were taken on board but he himself couldn't join because of those connections. Um, what else should I tell you about? Ah, oh, Home Guard Manual, this issued in 1941, lots of interesting information there because these were amateur soldiers, some had served perhaps in World War One, but a lot of them were amateur soldiers, too old um, to serve in the Red Army or too young or in reserves occupations like my granddad who was, uh, they needed his skills, helping making planes in, uh, in factories there and originally they used to have to use a lot of initiative um, so you might notice in the captions between this section and the next time standing there and I've actually got a, a wooden gun, not a real gun, um, designed to fool the enemy in there before there was enough guns issued. Right, oh, sounds like there's a knock at my door. I think my uniform's been delivered. Welcome 
to part two of my home guard um, instructions. My uniform, as you see, turned up. Um, so now I'm Lieutenant Grigg of the uh, of the home guard. Right. Home guard initially um, didn't have uh, any rifles. Um, eventually, they were given surplus ones with slightly different ammunition to the regular forces, which caused a bit of a problem. So, what you do is you make one. So, I've got a nice broom handle. What you could do is get some string and attach a bread knife to it or a carving knife, um, and that way you could stab the enemy if they came near you. Um, not sure I'd want to use that against. Uh, German paratroopers uh, armed with rifles and um, machine guns. Also, it's very useful um, broom handle as a substitute for a uh, for a rifle on parade. So you could do a proper parade even before your rifles turn up. Now you haven't got weaponry, so you're going to have to improvise. You're going to have to improvise and get the Germans to believe that you've got um, weapons. So this is a cunning little boy. Some camping plates, some nice metal camping plates. What you do is you go in your field and you'd bury them. So just the tops were showing of the plates across your field and then put a sign up saying danger minefield. Germans see this and they're going to think there's a minefield. So that way you can funnel them into somewhere where you could ambush them. Now the Germans work out that it's just plates and not a minefield. Well then, when the Germans actually army come across a proper British army minefield, they might think it's another trick. Walk across a minefield and get themselves blown up. Now I've got the um, the Lincolnshire Home Guard um, uniform on there, so I've got the Home Guard uh, there. Got the regimental badge of the local regiment. Um, most units would have the shoulder patch of the um, the regular army regiment they're attached to, so that's what they've got in Dad's army. Um, in Lincolnshire, they used to have just one one um, little imp badge on the shoulder there, so that's why I've got one and not on the on the other side. But I've got my home guard flashes there. Their belts were slightly different. They either had leather belts or the privates or cans on the little gun on it. Um, the officers. Now, what else? Um, other cunning tricks you could do. Um, home guard unit near Grantham apparently used to put lines of lights on a nearby hill, so the Germans would think that's where the factories were and would bomb the open uh, farmland rather than bomb the factories in the town. Now, shotgun. This isn't a real one, of course, but then again, not having a real one, doesn't matter, you might still fool the Germans. So, shotgun. Um, farmer shotgun is something that the early home guard units would use. Um, could be quite useful if you go up to a, a German tank and fire the shotgun through the slits of the driver and the gunner. Now, there was various experiments tried with the cartridges that go in the shotgun. Um, some troops tried to cut the metal base bit so it split apart, worked like shrapnel um, and caused more injury. Unfortunately, it used to jam the barrel. So what the Home Guard manual suggests is you leave the left one as a normal cartridge, but in the right barrel, that cartridge, you open up with your army pen knife, fill it with candle wax, and then put the pellets back in. And it becomes like a solid shot, like a bullet coming out, rather than just scattered little pellets. So you have one if you want to shoot someone at a distance, the right hand one with your wax pellet, and your left hand one if people are closer and you want to scatter shot. Excellent. Um, what else? Um, grenades. Now, here's a uh, here's my model grenade. Um, we all know how the grenade works. What you do is you pull out the pin, there, let go, and after seven seconds, the thing should blow up um, and it all breaks apart because um, it's all scored the metal and causes death and destruction. Now, the Home Guard manual instructs you on how to throw your grenade, bombing drill with your dummy grenade. So, what you do, step one is you take your grenade your right hand by your hip and your left hand hold the pin then 
you turn to your right slightly whilst facing the enemy pull your right arm quickly back looking down checking that the pins out bend the right knee extend the left arm and throw it at the enemy there are occasional stories of home guard units where they've been practicing with live grenades passing them around and someone's gone is this important um the grenade was then live and people have had to pick the things up rather quickly and throw it out the door before everyone gets hurt and maimed super duper so um other things that you can use the Finns have been working out ways of knocking out russian tanks when the russians attack it attacks in the winter war um, by using molotov cocktails you get a bottle you mix um, tar kerosene and petrol the tar sticks the petrol um, and kerosene ignite very quickly um, so you get a lighted one of these in a bottle throw it at your tank petrol bomb the second and third one you throw at a tank and it usually takes a couple to knock a tank out you don't have to light because the tanks obviously already on fire you can also get an old tin put a bit of gelatine in it and a detonator and use that as an improvised hand grenade other top tips if you were um going through a wood and you thought the enemy were there what you do is you were warned to take your tin hat off as going through the wood because if a branch hits your tin hat as you're going through the wood the enemy would hear it um other top tips get a knife you think the enemy are around get a knife stick it into a ground in the ground and put your ear on the end of the knife and it acts as an amplifier so you can hear the enemy marching around um also if you're around at night the best way to see if the enemy's around is stop occasionally kneel down and the enemy then are more likely to be in silhouette against the sky if you're kneeling down good way of finding them these have practice drills of blindfolding someone and sending a certain amount of soldiers one side and a certain amount of soldiers the other side and the blindfolded officer uh, soldier would have to work out go four past that side and i think three that side and it tunes your ears to listening out for the enemy at night they used to practice creeping up on a sentry so you creep up as close as you can before firing and so they used to try and creep up on someone and if they were spotted a flag was held up now the reason for this is if you shoot at an enemy from a distance you're more likely to miss and you'll alert the enemy you get close to the enemy shoot them boom. more likely to kill them <laughs> there we go um so that's lots of top tips on how you can use your very minimal equipment to try and defeat the enemy thank you very much and good night Thank you.